And for my next act of prestidigitation, this computer hooked up here. Oh, stupid teams. And for my next act of prestidigitation, this computer hooked up here contains a Radeon RX 7900 XT. But look, it's too small to contain. It's a text workbench. How is there a 7900 XTX attached to this system? There's nothing here. There's a, there, you don't even need extra PCIe power. What's going on? It's a magic trick. It's a magic trick made possible by PCI Express Fabric. In this case, PCI Express Fabric from Liquid. Let's, um, let's take a look. All right, so the real magic here is not the 15 foot cables that I have going through the floor. It is this. This is a PCI Express Gen 4 interface card, redriver card. This is 16 Gen 4 lanes that will go all the way down to the closet. I don't have a ton of really long cables, so I've only got it configured for PCI Express by eight. But this connects to a machine in the basement that is just a bunch of PCIe slots. But the fabric is programmable, which means that I can have a bunch of PCIe devices attached and pick them with different software. And the computer, it's not a virtual machine, it's a real physical computer. This computer physically thinks that it has a local GPU attached. It's just that the GPU is about 15 feet that way. And then I have to run a monitor cable back up or use the iGPU and copy the display over the PCIe bus. You see, this is modern composable infrastructure. Let's, let's go to the basement and let me show you so you get a better mental model of what's going on here. We're just right below the studio, so the news desk is only about 10 feet that way. But this, this is the real magic. I've got a 5700 XT, a 6900 XT, and a 7900 XTX. And they're in our Liquid Pro 4U chassis. This is just a PCIe enclosure. It doesn't do anything other than hold the graphics cards. But they're connected to our Liquid PCIe fabric and our Liquid PCIe controller. And so which physical PCIe card is assigned to which physical PCIe slot is controlled in software. What that means is that I can physically map any one of these GPUs to any one of the computers physically attached with a PCIe card like the one we saw upstairs. I always like to come to the workshop and then just sort of remote in and check the fabric before I go, you know, everywhere else, making sure that everything works. And we can see from LSPCI that our unmapped 6950 and our 5600 are actually showing up on the PCIe bus. They show up here because they're not mapped to any physical machine yet. We're literally controlling PCIe lanes. We're switching physical PCIe lanes. It works with most peripherals. You might have also noticed that our single network card that was all the way on the right hand side in the chassis is showing up like 12 times. Yeah, that's a multi-root IO virtualization Pensando network card. You can have one 25 or 100 gigabit network card that can be shared across the PCIe fabric for you know, 10, 12 hosts. That should be another video. One physical network card for 12 machines? Network cards got to the promised land before GPUs? Yeah, yeah, they really did but that is a video for a different day. But this is the magic of PCIe fabrics, which is why I'm so excited about this. And of course, the next logical step is just using software to say, hey, unplug the 7900 XTX, now plug in the RX 6950 or 6900 XT, and then boom, it's attached to the machine upstairs. Because the hardware is physically attached to physical machines, this is just like you have a hardware tester physically swapping GPUs. And this also means that for our automation layer, we could build a game testing suite and library that could rotate through whatever GPUs I've got in my PCIe Fabric library. NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, Intel GPUs, all on the same physical machines. I could run through a test suite for a game in a completely automated way. There's nobody, as far as I know, is doing this kind of a thing with a PCIe Fabric. Liquid actually is making a lot more money doing other kinds of things with it but I wanted to show just how innovative PCIe fabrics can be if you're thinking a little outside the box. And if you look at the system closely, yes, our 7900 XTX is showing in Device Manager. It's a perfectly normal GPU. Everything is good to go. But for my next trick, let's change it to a different GPU. And a one, and a two, and a three. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Windows is not PCIe hot plug, so this will take a second. <sighs> yeah, so Windows 10 and 11 don't really do PCIe hot plug. Windows Server really hasn't done PCIe hot plug well since uh, <laughs> HP Enterprise stuff with like PCIe X slots. And that really has come back to haunt them with NVMe because NVMe is PCIe and NVMe storage removable hot plug is the new hotness. Intel, for their part, has worked around it by completely redoing how the PCIe bus works when you enable VROC. That is a, a whole other conversation. But other than having to reboot the system to change the GPU in Windows, which is not a thing that you have to do in Linux, mind you. In Linux, this works completely fine for hot plug, as long as the platform supports PCIe hot plug. And most of the AMD ROM, I mean, this is AM5, so we're coloring outside the lines a little bit with AM5. AM5 is not officially a liquid supported platform. I can get it working because I'm magic, but AM5 is not an officially supported platform for the liquid. Like this is not a thing that you would normally do in the enterprise. I'm just showing you a cool off-label use case. I know a magician's never supposed to explain a magic trick, but this is the mind-blowing thing about this if you do this kind of work. If you're a developer and you do DevOps or you've heard the terms infrastructure as code, this really is infrastructure as code, but it's hardware control, not just software control. Usually we're talking about virtual machines and standing up containers and doing ingress and egress routing with containers that are running on a cluster of bare metal hardware. But in this case, we're taking real physical GPUs and mapping them to real physical hosts over the PCI Express bus. You may have even followed other projects on this channel like the VFIO stuff, kicking that off a decade ago. It's one of the very early adopters, yours truly, for VFIO use cases, building that out in the Linux kernel and all the fun stuff that followed with that, just standing on the shoulders of giants getting that done. But that was passing a piece of hardware to a virtual machine. This is not that. This is not that at all. I've got a Threadripper machine, a desktop class machine, Intel class machines. Imagine our PCI Express fabric. In our liquid drawer, we've got our three GPUs from Team Green and NVIDIA GPUs. We've got our three GPUs from AMD. We've even thrown in an Intel Arc A770 for good measure. These are all connected on a PCI Express bus, but each slot is isolated and it's programmable which slot matches to which host. So with one of these cards installed in each of these machines and all 16 of our PCI Express lanes going to our liquid PCI Express switch in software, even from my phone, I can say, okay, our Threadripper system, it gets the A770. I can even say that it gets the A770 and the 3070, but for game testing or software development or anything like that, I can control it in software. The thing that gives us is that I can write tests against real hardware like I do tests against actual software. I went to AMD's campus and I've been working on a video for a little while. They have the red door room where they're doing experiments on just a sea of CPUs. And this is how they've done their DevOps infrastructure for CPUs. But this takes it to the next level. This is a way you can do the same kind of thing with GPUs, meaning that when they need to validate and test the CPU, they can kick off a little test done in software, but it's going to run bare metal on real physical pieces of hardware in order to do the validation. With something like this, you gotta close the loop. You're gonna have to use some video capture or frame buffer capture or something like that, ideally, so you can make sure the menus aren't messed up, there's not visual glitching or artifacting. And with where we are now with large language models and training AI, a small team of five or six people can put this together with something like a liquid product inside your organization and then be able to run all of this testing in an automated fashion. No more interns taking a GPU, pulling it out of this system, slamming it in another system, and then wearing out your motherboard after just a few thousand insertions of your GPU. No, you just configure a bunch of different machines, connect them to the fabric, configure a bunch of different GPUs, connect them to the fabric, and then you've got you know, seven times seven machines, 49 possible combinations. Or if you go for the big liquid enclosures, you can get 20 different GPUs in there and you can do all kinds of software qualification without ever physically moving a GPU. Saves a lot of time, saves a lot of overhead, and means you can do fully automated game testing. It's a, it's a, it's a game changer, pun intended. But it's not just for games. This is just one creative off-label use case of the liquid PCI Express fabric. In enterprises, they are maximizing use of things like enterprise storage and enterprise GPUs. There might be a managed service provider that is shuffling hardware 
uh, among customers that are renting time hourly. So if you can configure something in software that says, okay, this customer gets this many GPUs and this many CPU hosts and this configuration, and nobody has to physically reconfigure anything in the data center, you can charge them access to that by the hour and make a pretty good margin if you've got this kind of infrastructure in place. Now, the real world where the rubber meets the road, it's not always roses. There are some I's to dot and T's to cross, but if you're willing to do a little bit of R&D time, you really can accomplish a lot. And this is also just cool as heck. So if I can in software set which PCIe slot in our enclosure, and by the way, that enclosure is small, but you can get a giant enclosure with 20 PCIe slots and 64 lanes, Gen 5. Gen 5s are optical cables. But you got a whole bunch of PCIe cards in there, and you can map one or more through the 16-lane interface that you have here. If you wanted to run two GPUs, you don't need bifurcation. It's just going to eh, gonna boot up and work. It's going to find its new GPU. Ah, look at that. That's, that's some good stuff. This also makes things like video game testing a little easier to test on real hardware because real hardware automated testing is a cool thing to do. It's magic. And so from here, our you know startup script or whatever could say, okay, GPU's changed. I need to run through my game testing suite again. It could automate game testing, launch the game, run through testing, and also trigger capturing video. You see, this could be HDMI going into our Magewell capture adapter or some other video capture, and you can capture real actual video. If you had a team of two or three people inside an organization with access to a liquid fabric, they could put all of this together for automation. And then your team of developers can schedule time on the cluster and rotate testing through six machines and six configurations in parallel without having to have six entirely different sets of hardware. Because which GPU matches to which physical host changes in software on the PCI Express liquid fabric. Now you mix in other devices like the Pensando NIC that I mentioned before. Pensando NICs really only make sense for the enterprise. You would never really do this on a workstation. But if I wanted to mix in and add the 25 gig NIC to this platform, it's a click of a button. And then it shows up on our PCI Express fabric and we're good to go. And it works pretty seamlessly like that, at least under Linux. Now, you really have some I's to dot and some T's to cross in the Pensando ecosystem. HP Enterprise and Aruba uh, dot the I's and cross the T's there in terms of your, your enterprise infrastructure. But this is just a what are the possibilities of video? So I don't want to get too far into the weeds with that kind of functionality. If you have SRIOV, the PCI Express Fabric in Liquid does support SRIOV, but SRIOV is disabled on my fabric in order to be able to show you this because in client platforms and Windows, and it's a little sketchy. This is basically plug and play and basically your toe in the water with what we call composable infrastructure. We can compose PCI Express devices into the PCI bus here. It is basically at this point standardized enough. There's still some rough edges, but it's basically standardized enough that a lot of PCIe peripherals will work this way. You still can get into some weird edge cases where like the GPU driver crashes and you get into a bad state and then you physically have to reset the GPU. Like you have to turn the enclosure off and back on. That is suboptimal. That is a thing that is a hardware problem. But if you have a bunch of these, you know, eight slot enclosures, like the slot, the system that I have set up here, you can have a couple of testers that are rotating through, you know, four machines at a time, no problem. Uh, with a whole host of GPUs that you're connected there. You can test SLI. Okay, spoiler, I didn't test SLI with the bridging and all the other stuff because I didn't have time to do that for this video. Theoretically, it should work because the fabric does do PCIe to PCIe communication. So like if you did set up something fancy, like using a DPU to do processing offload direct to storage, that doesn't even necessarily have to hit a compute node for those actual data transfers. So very, very low CPU overhead on our PCI Express fabric. So basically, PCI Express for storage, networking, and video cards, video cards in a big way in this video, mean that a whole universe of things that you probably never thought of are possible when you can not actually physically swap around your hardware. This is really cool. If we got to a point where GPUs 
work like our network cards, that's my promised land future. Imagine that you have a box in your basement that's many thousands of dollars probably, running your whole home AI, as well as gaming and everything else that you might run in your home setup. So it's like you're going to play some games, you're going to run at 4K, 150 hertz or something, and then somebody else wants to play games, okay, the, then your performance might drop down to like 4K 60, and somebody else is playing at 4K 60, and then you're also doing whole home AI. Those are the kinds of things that are possible if PCI Express fabrics enter the mainstream and ubiquity. But for now, for software testing and scalability, PCI Express fabrics open up a whole world of possibilities there for automation. The same kinds of automation that we enjoy with Ansible and Terraform and Amazon Web Services and Azure can come to physical hardware with physical machines. This thing can netboot. You can re-image the operating system. Heck, the boot drive could even be composed over PCI Express Fabric. Although if you are using this for game troubleshooting, I wouldn't recommend that because you really don't want anything competing with the GPU on the PCI Express bus, even though on the PCI Express bus you've got lots and lots of extra overhead. Just, you know, for stability and troubleshooting reasons, it's always good to have local storage. But you can use network booting to deploy a network image. This particular motherboard has 10 gig Ethernet and can do iSCSI boot as well. So you could do an iSCSI boot volume and that works pretty great in Linux. Windows, not so much, but Linux works pretty good. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. This has been a quick look at Liquid's PCI Express fabric and at least one off-label use case for that. If you have any ideas for hardware automation that you want to see or something that you actually work on and you'd like to work with me on putting together a video, let me know because this is out there. This is the bleeding edge, like not a thing that is meant for a normal use case, but check out more about liquids pci express fabric maybe that gets you some thinking maybe that solves some problems inside your organization to do with you know, time sharing physical hardware or even just composing virtual machines or anything else i'm one of this level one i'm signing out you can find me in the level one forums